In the world of popular music, few praises are higher than that of John Lennon saying, he aspired to be like you, and few songwriters can claim such an honor. But the two that can are undoubtedly two of the greats, Jerry Goffin and Carole King. The pair have been credited with writing much of the soundtrack of the 60s, from hits like Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow, One Fine Day, Locomotion, and of course, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman. You make me feel, you make me feel. Hello there, it's Warren Hewitt here. I hope you're doing marvelously well. Welcome back to another episode in this series. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when we have a new video. Of course, if you're into production, you can go to producelikeapro.com and sign up for the email list and get a whole bunch of free goodies. Carol King, born Carol Klein, and Jerry Goffin met in the fall of 1958. Jerry was 19 and a night student at Queen's College, while the 16-year-old Carol had just begun her studies at the college herself. They met in the student union through a mutual friend, and Jerry offered to drive Carol home. The conversation quickly turned to music, and when they arrived at her parents' house, she brought him into the living room and they wrote their first song together. I was going to Queens College at the time, and I met this girl, Carol King, and I was writing a play, and I made this deal with her that if she would write the play for me, the music to the play, I would write rock and roll lyrics for her. And uh, we sat down and wrote a song called The Kid Brother, and it was recorded by Mickey and Sylvia. It was the very first song we ever wrote was recorded. Although Jerry had wanted to write a Broadway musical with Carol, they quickly turned their efforts to popular songs which had the benefit of more immediate financial reward. This became even more important after the pair married in 1959, and soon became parents. Having the financial means to raise their family became the center of their efforts. Jerry worked a day job as a chemist while the pair would write together at night. It was the first number one single together that would give Jerry the security to leave his job as a chemist so that the pair could invest themselves fully in their careers as songwriters. That song was Will You Love Me Tomorrow. I wasn't working because I was the stay at home mom or, you know, would have, I was pretty much a mom most of the time. I mean, the, yeah. the, the part in the musical goes by really quickly, but when he, when we made, I think it had sold 10,000 units or some, or a million units and that was $10,000. I don't remember what it was, but all of a sudden he could quit his day job. And that was momentous. Over the course of the 60s, Goffin and King wrote hit song after hit song, while working in their cubicle at Alden Publishing. Songs like Chains, It Might As Well Rain Until September, The Locomotion, One Fine Day, Take Good Care Of My Baby, Up On The Roof, and Pleasant Valley Sunday. While audiences adored the songs of Goffin and King, brought to life through the performance talents of artists such as The Shirelles, Bobby V, The Drifters, Little Eva, and eventually The Monkees, the pair were even more important to the musicians and songwriters who looked up to them. This included two young, aspiring songwriters in England in the early 60s, John Lennon and Paul McCartney. John Lennon has stated that when he and Paul first started writing songs together, they wanted to be the Goffin and King of England. In the early days, Paul and I, we wanted to be the Goffin and King of England. You know, Goffin and King were very big those days, and we used to want to be Buddy Holly and Goffin King, etc. This is further highlighted by the fact that the Beatles covered a Goffin and King song on their debut album, the song Chains. Lennon and McCartney achieved their goals. They brought their songwriting talents to the US and further changed the popular music landscape. But Goffin and King weren't done. Although their marriage would end in 1968, they finished 1967 with one of the greatest songs of all time, a song written for an equally inimitable artist. The artist was Aretha Franklin, and the song was Natural Woman. The song began with the title, a title so important, they gave its creator songwriting credit. This was written by Jerry Goffin and me, and Jerry Wexler's name is on it because he gave us the title. And it's a great title. And it's a great story. There's a whole chapter in my memoir about that experience of how Jerry Wexler pulled up. Jerry and I are walking on Broadway, pulls up in his car, 
there's in a limo and the window rolls down and he says, hey, uh, come over. And Jerry and I walk over and he says, I, I, I got a title for you. I want you to write this for Aretha. And he says, Natural Woman. The title inspired the song and Jerry and Carol sat down and wrote it that very night. The next day they recorded a demo and played it to Wexler. They heard nothing for several days. They didn't know whether Aretha liked it or whether it would even get recorded. But then Wexler invited them to come in and hear the final recording. Hearing Aretha's performance of Natural Woman for the first time, I experienced a rare speechless moment. To this day, I can't convey how I felt in mere words. Anyone who had written a song in 1967, hoping it would be performed by a singer who could take it to the highest level of excellence, emotional connection, and public exposure, would surely have wanted that singer to be Aretha Franklin. Before we get to Aretha's performance, let's talk a little bit about the song itself. When writing the song, Carol and Jerry placed themselves musically in the space of all of the great rhythm and blues, gospel and soul hits of the day. And we drove home. We were living in New Jersey by then and we listened to WNJR and uh, that was the rhythm and blues station. We just infused ourselves. I mean, we were aware of rhythm and blues and gospel and all of that before, but we infused ourselves with it. You can hear this in the piano which has these powerful, accentuating phrases, followed by this held-back pulse, which allows the other instruments to come forward. You can hear it in the way the background vocals set the mood and the way the orchestration of strings and wind instruments build into a triumphant chorus. And of course, it's Aretha's singing that captured the incredible spirit that was already present in the song and brought to it a whole new level of artistry and excellence. Aretha takes Carol's melody and Jerry's celebratory lyrics and broadcasts them in a way that only the Queen of Soul could do. As Carol states in her memoir, in the end, it was Aretha's performance that sent our song not only to the top of the charts, but all the way to heaven. Aretha recorded Natural Woman at Atlantic Recording Studios in New York, shortly after the tumultuous but productive sessions at Fame Studios in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. The sessions included some of Fame's widely respected rhythm section players, including Spooner Oldham on piano, Tommy Cogbill on bass, Gene Chrisman playing drums, and background vocals were sung by Franklin's sisters, Carolyn and Irma Franklin. Jerry Wexler was the producer. Natural Woman was released in September of 1967 and hit number eight on the Billboard Hot 100 and number two on the Billboard Rhythm and Blues charts. It became one of her signature songs and no one will ever forget her incredible performance of it at the Kennedy Honors Ceremony honoring Carole King in 2015. Aretha's performance at the ceremony and the original recording are perfect examples of what a consummate artist can do with incredible songwriting. And it's a song that has been recorded by a long list of artists from Celine Dion to Carol herself. Carol's recording came on her landmark 1971 album, Tapestry, and is equally wonderful in its own completely different and personal way. As Carol wrote, how do you follow Aretha Franklin? You don't you can only precede her. Even though Carol's recording came out in 1971, she doesn't try to recreate the song that she originally envisioned for Aretha. She goes back and makes it her own. Carol's version is slower. She brings the piano forward and you can hear the constant pulse in the instrument throughout. Carol sings a little bit of backup for herself, but there is really much more of a focus on a solo voice singing at the piano. Carol's version is intimate. We are drawn into her personal celebration of love and human connection. Which brings us to Jerry's lyrics. It often surprises people how Jerry was able to write lyrics for songs like Will You Love Me Tomorrow or Natural Woman, which showcase the female voice. And yet somehow he was able to tap into truths that so many others could relate to and lyrics that voices like Carol and Aretha could bring to life. With lines like, and when I knew I had to face another day, Lord, it made me feel so tired. Or in the second verse, when my soul was in the lost and found, 
you came along to claim it. Jerry was able to tap into such raw human emotions that bring meaning to so many people. Carol's version of Natural Woman, along with the rest of the Tapestry album, was recorded at A&M Studios in January of 1971. Lou Adler produced the record. Most of the album was recorded in Studio B, since Joni Mitchell had booked Studio C. However, Studio C was the space with the gorgeous Steinway Grand Piano. One night, Carol and some of her musicians were able to get into Studio C for three hours to record the basis of three songs. I Feel the Earth Move, You've Got a Friend, and Natural Woman on that Steinway Grand. Carol's version of Natural Woman is part of an almost perfect album. Tapestry spent 15 consecutive weeks in the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100, and the album won a Grammy for Album of the Year, along with Best Pop Female Performance. Certainly, Natural Woman was a huge part of the album's success. Jerry Goffin and Carole King have rightfully been credited for writing the soundtrack of the 60s, with some of the most important songs of the era. And Natural Woman, which came at the end of their time together, truly highlights the incredible songwriting power of this duo and their ability to write songs for specific voices that could also translate into so many new interpretations and make them meaning for generations of listeners. Well. I don't really know what else to add to this, except that Natural Woman is one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. Aretha sells this song so well, because you've got this powerful black American woman at a time when there was a lot of social unrest, and I think it meant so much more. But then when Carol sang it in 71, she brought it back to the personal. She brought it back to this idea of just celebrating her lover. You make me feel like a natural woman. Between the two of them, they showcase completely different interpretations of the song, both absolutely incredible and amazing. The fact that Carol said, you can't top Aretha's version, you can only precede it, I think is beautiful. Because in a way, you listen to Carol's, and it sounds like the beautiful, intimate, you know, singer-songwriter version that somebody else took and made into this beautiful, massive, you know, uh, anthemic version with incredible vocal prowess. They both exist in absolute, pure ecstasy with each other. I don't really know how other way to describe it. And the fact that Jerry wrote these lyrics from a woman's perspective, and everybody is always completely bemused when they hear that, is wonderful. It just shows you great songwriters are great songwriters. If you're a songwriter, work on your craft. Listen to talents such as Lennon and McCartney and Goffin and King and soak it up. When John Lennon says that he and Paul wanted to be the English version of Goffin and King, that says a lot. And it's no accident that the two most successful songwriters of all time are two pairs, and that is Lennon McCartney and Goffin and King. Thanks ever so much for watching. Please check out the other videos in the series. We've actually done a video on Carole King's Tapestry. There will be a link down below to the album Tapestry, so don't forget that. And another thing, if you're interested in donating to the Goffin and King Foundation, please do. It's a, something I'm a part of and is really very important to me. It is run by my very good friend, Louise Goffin, and the money raised from that is a charity, goes back to helping other songwriters, people that don't have the advantages that some of us may have. And recently we've been starting to work with schools and putting music teachers in there. It's a really, really important cause. It's very, very close to my heart. So thank you everybody for your support. So long, farewell, avidusayan, au revoir, adios, tschüss, ciao, goodbye.